serious, I can't play with this. I'm not here to look cute. I'm not here to impress you. I don't really care. Because I've asked the Lord before, you know, take this away from me. I don't have to preach. As long as I can continue to worship Him, it's good with me. I don't need no title. <clears throat> I certainly don't need a platform. I certainly don't need it. I don't wait to get up here to worship God. I don't wait to get up here to preach. I don't wait until I get up here. That's, that's right where I am. Right where I am. I want to thank Minister Joe last week to, who preached last week. <laughs> my heart is overwhelmed. I'm just, I was just so, I buried my head there because I was getting emotional, too emotional. Because I think the last time I heard Minister Joe preach was over 30 years ago. It was over 30 years ago. And he was the brother I looked up to. He was the one who really inspired me as a young man, kept me straight. I remember the days of the challenges, the challenges and the challenges were hard. And Thursdays, he, he might not remember this, but Thursdays, he used to come down every Thursday and meet me after work. And we would go lunch, go dinner together and just pour into me, help me to stay focused and to hear him in the pulpit preaching. My heart is just, I'm blessed the Lord for you. Minister Joe, bless the Lord for you. It's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. It's a testimony of the power of restoration the power of restoration, how God can move us from not just forgiving us, but move us into a place of freedom. That's a testimony right there. Those of you who don't believe it, just talk, talk to Joe. Talk to him. This is not just something we read in Scripture. This is what we've lived. We've lived this. And it becomes powerful. As I was reflecting on the, I, I was asked to speak because I, I, I felt it was unfair to pull in any other preacher at short notice because I always keep warning them. I said, always have your sermon. Always be hearing from God. But one of the things that I was reminded of what was coming into my heart was at Christmas, my daughter and I, we decided that we're going to Dubai that this, at Christmas, we felt it, would, it was a little bit triggering in terms of emotionally hanging around, going through some of the stuff. So we decided, let's go to Dubai. And, and some of you know Shaloma, who was in our worship team here, and her husband. We thought, let's go and crash there first Christmas together. And so we, we was at their house, and where they where they live was right across is the is a big shopping center. So they said, let's go and do go into the shopping center. It's quite famous shopping center. So we said, okay, fine, but here's the condition. Before I go shopping, I must eat. Because I know the psychology behind shopping centers. If you don't eat, you end up spending money. But if you eat if you eat, you, you, you save money. You save money. So they said, yes, good. So we went, we had some food. And we finished from the, sh the food place. And we went into, it was, it was part of the, the shopping mall. And as we got into the shopping mall, huge, the thing is massive. We was walking down and they had a stall just in the middle. We just come out, walked to the stall and, before I can even get past the stall, there was a lady took out a bottle and she said, do you want, and she sprayed the fragrance, sprayed the, my arm with, with, the, with the perfume thing. Didn't even ask me properly if I wanted it, yes or no, it was too late, she already sprayed on my arm, but 
I'm sensible like at first. <laughs> I'm sensible like at first. I said, thank you. Thank you. And I kept walking. Because I think over there when they see a big black man, they must think, yeah, got money. <laughs> so I just, thank you. And we continue walking and we, we walked a little bit further down and Shara stopped in one of the shops. And... Um, you know, as being a guy, there's not all the shops men go into. We just do our thing. We stand outside like soldiers, you know. So I stood outside and Shara and Shaloma went inside the shop and, and smelt the, after the, uh, the thing they put on me. I said, why well, did he nice? <laughs> well, she's really nice. And it just had this, Smell of Dubai. It just had this smell of, and each time I was feeling, it's like, this kind of nice. So when Shara then came out, I said, Shara, smell this. Shara smelled. I go, oh, dad, yeah. That's the, I said, let me just, let me just find out what's it called. Let me just find, so I, we doubled back. Don't forget, I already had something to eat. So we doubled back and um, I went up to the store and I said to the lady, that what you sprayed on me, what, what's it called? She goes, oh, oh, in order, try this one. And she sprayed another thing on me. And I was like, oh, hang on a second, because I, I don't like the pressure. The pressure selling don't really work with me, you know. And she sprayed this other thing on me. And um, no, it was on a stick thing. And we wave it. And I was like, whoa. I was like, now that's nice. So now I've got a dilemma because I've got two fragrances that are, are really, really nice. So the thing is, is now, all right, um, how much? So me being me, I, I want deal, in it? I have to have a deal. Um, so she's like, do you want the one? And I was like, although I have eaten, but you kind of beat me. I have to have the both. I have to have the two, but you have to give me a deal. What's the deal? So we worked out a price. And I was like, you know what? I like this because it reminds me, the fragrance reminds me of where I'm at. And it's something I, I can't get outside of the country. So I bought these things in my bag and I walking down. I was like, so what's the purpose of me eating? Because I still end up spending money. And, this, and what, what made it worse? It was the first stall. I didn't even... The, the shopping center stretched for eight, and the first stall, the, fir the very first one, and I already spent money. More than I an had anticipated. So by the time we get to the end of the week, and I, was, I kept saying to Shara, Shara, I like this, I like this. And Shara said, Dad, I need to, I want to go and buy some oil. So I said, oil? She says, yeah, I want some fragrant oil. So I said, I don't know what that is. So we asked the people, where could we go and get some more? I said, you can, oh, you can't get from here. You have to go down, downtown in the old part of Dubai. It's like, okay, that sounds a bit risky, but the country's supposed to be safe. So we went anyway. Cut a long story short, we go into the shop. And for me, I've never experienced this before. Where you go into the shop and all they have it's fragrant oil, bottled oil. And so I had a little smell of the, the perfume thing that I had, and I said, could you get something close to this? So they smelt it, and it's like, yes. Yeah, we've got something similar to it. It's not the exact, but we've got something similar. And they took out this jar these jars of oil and they put little samples and we smelt it and it's like, yes, this, this is close. This is powerful. This is powerful thing. Until we wanted to find out the price. And that's where everything changed was the price. Because this is the real oil now. This is not something you get in, in Surrey Street Market. This is the real stuff. 
And so when they took out the little bottle and they're telling us how much I have to pay for a little bottle, I said, Shara, hang on a second here. Wait, wait, wait. So we had, we had a look at conversation. I said, Shara, don't show that you're really interested. Just because if you show you're interested, you can't negotiate on the price. So you have to pretend like you're willing to walk away. So when they gave us the price, we said we want two, but that price is too much. And we was like, is there anything else? And, and each of the perfumes, the oil, if you want this kind of oil, just a little drop, and the whole place will smell seriously with just a drop. I just had a little bit, and for two days I can still smell it. Now, in this text which we have in, in the book of the Gospels of John, sorry, of Luke, this is what this, this woman, this is what this woman was doing. She went and got fragrant oil, but she didn't buy no cheap stuff. She got the most expensive that will cost a rich man almost a year's salary. The, the fragrance which we have on one, one commentary says is the fragrance that you will get from India. It is so rare. And because it's so rare, it's so powerful, but it's also so expensive. Because my issue wasn't the fragrance. My issue was the cost. The cost was so much. Because, I, well, you know, you're blessed Lord, when you have a credit card, you can just whip out the credit card and, and you can deal with the consequences afterwards. But when it comes to God, God is looking for people who will be committed to him. And it's what we offer to him. Now, because it's for myself, I will spend, I have a budget on myself because if I don't need it, I ain't buying it. That's how I'm disciplined. I, I try to be disciplined. If I don't need it, I'm not buying foolishness if I don't need it. But the oil that this woman, what she had was a fragrant oil that was so expensive that it was bottled in what they called an alabaster jar or alabaster box. And she took, I don't know how, how she could afford it, but she afforded the best. And this is a special oil used either for weddings or dedications or funerals or burial for special occasion. This is one that you don't put this on going to street. You, there's certain fragrances only on special occasions. I don't know if anybody else have that. Do you have any fragrance that only on special occasions this come out because this too, this costs too much money? This one, uh, Ariel's here, but this one I don't share. Me, Ariel, you can use all my other ones, but there's ones, leave it alone. Don't go in my wardrobe, leave my things alone, Irie. The other ones you could use, but there's certain fragrances that you've invested because when we talk about making a sacrifice to God, David says, I will not offer to God something that hasn't cost me. That when you give something to God, it's supposed to cost you. You're supposed to look and know. It's like if you buy the oil, you're supposed to look at your bank account and don't know. You look at it, it's supposed to cost you. We don't offer to God. You can't offer to God a sacrifice if it hasn't cost you anything. A sacrifice must be something that costs. And it's in this scripture, in this gospel, Jesus, he's visiting the house of a Pharisee, Simon, and he's at this house and the situation is he's, he's having a meal with some of the, the people there. And whilst he's having this meal, 
there is a woman who has this jar of special fragrant oil and she wants to present this as her offering of worship to him. She's not going to him and offering him a song because a song doesn't mean that you've made a sacrifice. Could be that you're just good at singing. She weren't offering a song. She weren't offering no prayers because prayer is based upon if you have a problem, you pray. She weren't offering a prayer. She weren't even asking for a prayer. What she was bringing was was something that cost her everything. And she was going to bring this as an offering to the Lord. Work with me just a second. I've been saved for a long time. (laughs) I've been going church, and let me just put this, I've been going church, not even of my own will sometimes, but literally all my whole life. Not saying all of it was be my choice. If you're raised in our kind of home, we didn't have no choice. You're going to church, period. If I just add up, and I got baptized at nine, if I was to add up from, say, for example, six years from my, from I was six through to, say, say 52 years, of going to church just on a Sunday, that would be under 3,000 times. Under 3,000 times, just Sunday. I'm not talking double services, because we was raised with double services. I'm not talking midweek services, because we had to have midweek service was in my house, so I couldn't avoid it every Wednesday. I couldn't avoid it every Wednesday. We had youth meeting Tuesday. Bible studies Monday, prayer meeting, that's right. So don't know, because we was raised. Every day there was some kind of church on. And so when you're raised in a Christian home and your parents are, are leaders, you have no choice, you have to go along. And I've gone to thousands, thousands of meetings. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. But sometimes when you've been going to church over and over and over and over and over again, you get too familiar with God. You become too familiar and you forget about the fear of God. And there were those who were with Jesus who were just so familiar with him. He's a person we can hang out with, he's one of our buddies. And they forget who he is. That's the danger sometimes. We can come to church and we go through church things and we forgot who Jesus really is. We forget the focus and the emphasis of who he is because we've become accustomed to him. We become accustomed to his presence. So there's things that could be happening that we become switched off to. What used to switch us on when we heard his name and we will become emotional or, or it will stir us in our emotion because we heard the name Jesus. Now we are so familiar with him that nothing happens. We come to church, we do our church and we go home and there's no change. Nothing's happened. Well, this is the situation that this woman was in. And Jesus here, he's sitting in the house of Simon. He's called Simon the, the, the leper. And he's here and he's, he's concerned to make sure all the food and everything is right for, for Jesus. He's just accustomed. This is just no big deal. He just wants to make sure that Jesus is looked after in terms of his physical needs right there where they're kicking back and 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 just chilling out what happens is this lady 
walks in. And this woman, she literally is risking her life in coming in because it breaks protocol. But she's looking for an opportunity because her, her heart is, I want to, I heard that Jesus was going to be here. And I want him to know that in some scriptures that said this is a lady who Jesus had dealt with before he had cast out seven demons out of her. She wanted to let him know. She wanted to appreciate what he has done for me, for her. And so she waited for the right time, the right place and right time. And here was an opportunity that she wanted to express herself to the Lord to say thank you, to show gratitude. But she didn't turn up empty-handed. She didn't turn up empty-handed. There was a reason that she was there because she wanted to give her worship to Jesus. But she didn't want to just give a little bit. She went for the most expensive, the most costly way of how she can express her worship to Jesus. Just hang with me a few minutes. Because when we talk about true worship, true worship is when we've given all. I know it's gone quiet in there because not all of you are worshippers, so some of you ain't going to get this. But true worship is when you've, you've given all. And this woman was so grateful for what Jesus has done in her life, she wanted to give it all. So she went and found a way how she can express her worship to Jesus. I wanted to understand that she didn't go into her home and look for some leftovers. She didn't rub rubbage around and see what have I got left over because that's why some people can't come into the house of God on a Sunday because a Saturday when they've done all they can, they're too tired. And what we do, we give like some of you, you can't even keep, keep your eyes open. You're in the house of God. Leftovers. You're left, that's leftovers. You're in the house of God. You give God your best. That's what worship is. You give God your best. You don't, I make sure I get to bed early on Saturday because when I'm coming into the house of God, I'm not giving God my leftovers. When I come into the house of God, it's to give God my best. He does not deserve second best. He does not deserve our leftovers. He deserves the best. So she came and she had a desire. I want to give because I know what he's done for me. I want to give him my best. So in order to do that, she had to put thought into what she's doing. What could I bring? What could I give to him that is the very best that I have? And I want you to understand the second thing was also she didn't just come to give her best. Some of us, when we come to church, help us, Holy Ghost. When we come to church, our mindset has been, what can I get from the Lord? We want to go from forgiveness to a place of freedom. And I'm looking at this woman who nobody else was noticing. And Jesus had to say, hang on a second, guys, have, did you see this woman? Because if you had seen her, you can learn some lessons from her. That's right. That's right. But this is a woman of reputation and you look down your nose because he's in the house of the Pharisee, religious people. Yeah. And sometimes the religious people are the worst people. Because we go through the motion, but we don't necessarily have a relationship with him. We just know all the rules and regulations. And Jesus was saying, move out of this religious, the religious people are watching you, but you're not watching 
this woman, you, 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 you're not seeing her. Not the way I, how I'm seeing her. I'm seeing her different. Some of the people who we reject and step over, we think they're nothing. But when they came, when she came, she didn't come to say, I want to be blessed by the Lord. She came saying, I come to bless the Lord. Wasn't it David in Psalm 34 that says, I will bless the Lord what at all times. His praise. I didn't come here just to, I didn't come to, I was going to say Ruach, but I'm not in Ruach. I think <laughs> help us holy goes. I think <laughs> a different church. <laughs> I didn't come to RCC to say, Lord bless me, Lord bless me, Lord bless me. But the change in attitude is that I came here, so I will bless the Lord with at all times. I can't say I had a good week. Tough week. Tough week. But I came. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. You see the mindset this woman had? Weren't coming with her hands outstretched. She came with her oil. Her expensive oil. And say, I'm going to bless you, Lord. I'm going to bless you. Whether I had a good week or bad week. I came to bless you. I came to lift your name up. She didn't come asking the Lord for anything. She didn't come looking to receive anything from the Lord. But she came to bless the Lord. Everyone else who was there came to receive. They came to eat. It's like I turned up at my brother's house yesterday. Me and my other brother, we went to see my eldest brother. And the joke was when we were sitting there, I realized when, I, when we rang the doorbell, being, being men, rang the doorbell, and we turned up with two, two long hand. <laughs> two long hand. Didn't even didn't come with nothing in our hands. It's not until we ring the doorbell and I said, Nev, we should have brought something. Because we was a last minute thing. Let's, let's go and see. We turn up empty handed. You see? And that's how sometimes we come to church. We turn up and then we realize, hang on a second, I haven't brought anything with me. I didn't bring a praise. I didn't bring a hallelujah. I didn't bring a thank you, Jesus. I come with my two, and both of us, two six foot plus brothers, standing up there with two long hand. Nothing in our hand. And we felt so shame because my, 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 my sister in law is old school. So she won't let us go until she give us something. She finds some frozen chicken and said, Take. I was like, oh man, I sat in the car after I said, Dev, what did we do, man? No foresight, no foresight whatsoever. But sometimes what happens is we come because we wanted to. We want to receive where this woman, her mindset was that she wanted to give. And, 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 and she came and if you look at the position of this woman, when you read through the scripture, her position was, wasn't one of grandeur. She waited carefully and she positioned herself so that she can be at the feet of Jesus. She didn't position herself as with everybody else. She positioned herself and humbled herself. And she positioned herself at the feet of Jesus. Right at his knees. At a time which represents brokenness. And here she is, see... She's at this place and she's humbly bowing before Jesus. And then those, Simon looking and saying, he looks at Jesus and he says, if Jesus was any kind of a prophet, if this man was any kind of a prophet, he should know what kind of woman this is. 
You understand that? He should know this woman is a sinner. If he was any kind of man of God, if he was any kind of a prophet, he should discern what kind of woman is approaching him. This is a woman of reproach. This woman has no dealing and should have no right to be here. Why? Because she is a sinner. What the Simon don't know is Jesus has a way of associating with people who others rejects. Jesus has a way of reaching people who otherwise would have been unreachable, who people step over and look down at. But Jesus, I thank God he didn't step over me. I thank God he didn't step over me. I thank God he reached out his hands and extended it towards me. And I'm so grateful because you know why? I didn't deserve it. It's different if you're good. But there's none of us that's really good. If the truth be known, we've been teaching over the last two weeks the challenge we have with our two nature. And before we come to Christ, the challenge, the battle we have trying to keep ourselves free from sin. But this woman, she bypassed all the protocols. She bypassed how people would see her and how people view you. Because there's some people who know where we're coming from. There's some people who know where we're coming from and like to remind us of where we're coming from and like to keep us in the past. That's how some people are. But this woman, she didn't come to see Simon Peter. She didn't come to see any of the other disciples. She didn't care who criticized her. She didn't care what you have to say. You were not her focus. She came to see one person. I came to see Jesus. I don't care about who, who's preaching this Sunday because if it's not pastor preaching this Sunday, I'm not coming to church. You missed it. If the worship team don't sing my favorite song, because you know I always sing worthy is in there. The worship team knows that. If you don't sing my favorite song, who cares? I didn't come here for the worship team. I didn't come here for the... I came to see Jesus. I want to hear Jesus. That's my focus. And this woman had this focus. She wanted to hear Jesus. That's what she wanted. She wanted to hear Jesus. And then when she was there, now, this is the key thing. She didn't wait for invitation from other people. She didn't wait for the worship team to say, come on now, let's lift our hands. Come on, let's stand. Come on, let's clap. Let's say hallelujah. Let's... She didn't wait for anybody. No one had to give her instructions. No one had to give her instructions. Let's stand. Let's sit. Let's prostrate ourselves on the floor. No one had to give her instruction. It was inside of her. It was inside of her and what her worship was spontaneous. Her worship came from inside. She just waited for the right opportunity and she brought that flask. She brought what she had at the right time and she put it before the Lord and broke that alabaster box and anointed him. She was able to worship and offer her worship without any reservation. It was unhindered because that is the essence of true worship. True worship is, I don't care if you're looking at me. I don't really care if you want to judge me or what you have to say. I didn't come here to please you. I came here for Jesus and I came to bless him. I came to honor him. I came to express to him what he has done for me. 
And because he's been so good to me, my worship is in comparison of my gratitude to him. So I'm giving him the best that I have. And she took this bottle or box which represented her life of very fragrant oil which represents her worship. She, she takes this and she breaks it and allow the fragrant oil to be released into the atmosphere. Two things. Sometimes our lives, we have to break the box so what's in us can come out. Because sometimes what's locked in us is dreams, our ministry. Uh, there's, there's things that's locked up inside of us that until the box is broken, nothing is coming out. And so sometimes the box needs to be broken so that the ministry can flow out, so that the oil can be released into the atmosphere. Are you hearing me? Sometimes that, those, there's some things, we have dreams inside of us, but we ain't letting the dream out. We've got vision inside of us, but we ain't letting the vision out. We've got ministry inside of us, but we refuse to be broken. Until there's a brokenness, sometimes when you go through the brokenness, that's when the oil begins to be released. And it's the same with our worship. You can't keep your worship locked up inside of you. Worship has got to be released. And I love the essence of, of this because the oil is so representative of the, the, the fragrance of our worship. When you release your worship, what fragrance does that let off? What is the fragrance of your worship? Because when you release pure worship, the fragrance is supposed to be here. You're supposed to, there's a smell in the spirit of sweet perfume. Now, I don't mean to criticize, but there's a difference if I put on Avon and I'm not criticizing any. But I, I've used that in the past and when I've sweat, it hasn't been complimentary. It has not been complimentary. But there's a difference when you put on a low budget and, and quality. I want when my worship goes before the Lord, is good quality. I want good quality. There's some people when they say hallelujah, the quality is poor. And there's some people when they say hallelujah, the, the, it carries weight. It smells right. It feels right. Because the essence of it, 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 it lingers. It lingers in the atmosphere. When there is a praise the Lord, it lingers. Yeah, that worship, it smells good. It ascends in the heavens. Yeah, this, this kind of perfume, this kind of worship, if the Lord was to come into this room and smell our worship, what would our worship smell like? What kind of quality? Because this, as I said, Avon, you put it on, in five minutes it's gone. The fragrance is gone. I want the kind of fragrance that when you leave the room, you still smell it. You could say, there always been in here. I can still smell the fragrance of your worship. When your worship lingers in the atmosphere. When your worship lingers in the atmosphere, that even when you're gone and somebody else walks in there, they feel, yes, yeah, I feel certain in the atmosphere is your worship. What is the quality of your worship? They criticize her. Let me end with this. 
Jesus said, Do you see this woman? This Sunday, do you see her? Because you probably walked right past her. You didn't even notice her. Because you knew she was a woman who had reputation. She weren't a pastor. She weren't a bishop. She didn't have no title. She didn't sing in the worship team. She weren't in no intercessory team. Nobody wanted her. But do you see her? She had no title. But Jesus says, do you see her? Because I entered into your house, the spiritual ones. I entered into your house and no one gave me any water. That's what Jesus said. No one even gave me some water to even wash my feet. None of you. We were doing our thing but we forgot Jesus. You know you can come to church and do church and still forget Jesus? Ask Jesus' parents when they took him to the temple. They took him to the temple and they're heading home. And when they reach halfway, they realize, where's Jesus? I thought you had him. They left Jesus behind and they're traveling. Parents, Social services should be called. This is, I'm telling you, social services should be called. You have a child and you're traveling. You know, my children, I remember we got in trouble because I really used to keep running off and talking to everybody. So we had to put this band around our hands and attach a string onto him because he, he would just disappear. We had to, no, no, we ain't letting you go. We used to get in trouble because other people, you're treating him like a dog. You don't know I real. I was gone. He used to be looking, where, where's Ariel? He, Ari, no. They had Jesus. They went to the temple and the parents are walking back halfway into their journey, miles down the road and they realize, who's got Jesus? Your own child, the savior of the world. Some of us are traveling and we forgot Jesus. We got through service, but we forgot Jesus. We sang our songs, but we forgot Jesus. We said our prayers, but we forgot Jesus. But this woman, <laughs> this woman as I close, Jesus said, to you, I came into your house. You invited me as your guest, but you forgot me. You didn't notice what impressed me wasn't the cooking of your food. You cook food good. I know some of you cook food. Amanda, I'll tell you some of your hand. Your hand good. And Shireen done me a little something, something over Christmas. Yeah, Shireen, yeah, I'm going to expose you, man. Shireen done a little something trying to make me put on weight. Yeah. Food good. Good, oh. Good and good. But it didn't impress Jesus. The food, the preparation, the table, all that didn't impress Jesus. What impressed him was this woman who turned up. That's what impressed Jesus. Jesus says, you didn't, you didn't even give me water for my feet. You got so accustomed to me. You got so, you came to church and you just got so used to me because you come time and time and time again and you forgot about me. Deborah, don't forget about me. Don't forget what I've done for you. But this woman washed my feet with her tears. Could I just ask you questions? I'm closing. When was the last time you worshipped till tears flowed down your face? When was the last time you worshipped and say, God, I was in such a mess. If you did not have kept me out, I don't know where I would have been. When was the last time that when you think about Jesus and what he's done for you, that tears come, you feel, Lord, if, if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you, when was the last time that you worship? 
to tears. I know we're saying, yeah, but we're a man. Men don't cry. Let me scratch your car and let's see what happens. <laughs> Let me scratch your car. Step on your shoes. See what happens. Like Austin's got some shoes. If Austin, if that was my size, you'd be walking on barefoot tonight. Trust me. Because they have shoes they're nice or I'm telling you. If it was my size. Jesus said, You gave me no kiss. No embrace. I'm in your company. Turn up to church or turn up to RCC. No kiss. No embrace. No tears. But can you see this woman? There's one person who came and they came to see me. They haven't stopped crying. In today's language, they took off their wig and wash wipe my feet because <laughs> can't can reach can't reach <laughs> but this person just continually offered worship and because she's done this I'm not just going to forgive her of her sins that you guys can criticize I'm moving her to a whole nother level. I'm moving her into freedom. She's now got peace. Your sins are forgiven. Every sin that you've committed is gone. I've wiped every single sin because of what you've done, because of your worship, because of your faith, because of what you've done. Because of what you've done, moved heart. It wasn't because of how you preach. It wasn't because of how you sing. It wasn't because of how you pray. It was your faith. God said, what you've done, move me. He never said that to the preacher. Because we think it's a preacher. No, you, the preacher didn't do it. But what you've done, what you've done, you impressed me so much. Your faith got to me. Other people was in the room, but what you done, I'm singling you out. Because what you done moved me. It moved me so much that I have to say, I'm cancelling all your sins. Some of us would say, Lord, do you know how big my sins are? Do you know this was a woman of reputation? Lord, do you know, do you know how many men I slept with? Do you know what kind of woman? I don't care. I'm wiping the slate clean. Today, God wants to wipe our slate clean. He wants to forgive us of every single sin, that there is no trace of sin, that when the Father sees us, He sees us pure. Wipe the slate clean. And then says, I'm moving you from forgiveness. Now go in freedom. Go in peace. Go and enjoy your life. Go and enjoy your life. You're now free. You don't have to be shackled anymore to your past and be embarrassed about your past. I'm now free. I'm now free. Walk in that freedom. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged today. Be encouraged. Bring your worship. Bring your your undiluted praise give it to the Lord and watch what he will do for you God bless you God bless you